Are video games the future of microbiome analyses? Some scientists think so. Researchers integrated a mini-game into the commercially successful video game Borderlands 3, in which gamers solve puzzles and, in doing so, help analyze sequencing data of gut bacteria. Since its release, 4 million players have solved 135 million puzzles in the mini-game, known as Borderlands Science. Researchers use these gamer-generated solutions to optimize sequencing analysis methods and, ultimately, advance understanding of the human gut microbiome. Welcome to Microbial Minutes, the American Society for Microbiology's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences. I'm Madeline Barron, Science Communication Specialist at ASM. Before we dive into today's video, please take a moment to fill out the survey linked in the description. It's five questions, takes less than three minutes, and your answers will help us make better videos. We appreciate the support. To appreciate the game, it helps to get a feel for the scientific mission behind the game. And that mission starts with poop, or more specifically, DNA extracted from poop. Scientists analyze DNA sequences obtained from microbes within intestinal contents to understand the type of bacteria living in the gut and their relationship to one another. These DNA sequences often correspond to a portion of a gene called the 16S rRNA gene that all bacteria have, but that varies depending on the type of bacteria. By comparing the similarities and differences between these 16S rRNA sequences, researchers can map out the evolutionary relationships among microbes, which is also useful for understanding their potential functions. Sequencing a sample yields thousands of 16S rRNA sequences. To compare them, the sequences need to be aligned to one another. That is, to see areas where the sequences are the same or different, we need to line them up end to end. With that, sequences don't always have the same nucleotide in a position, or they don't have the same number of nucleotides. This could be because there was some historical deletion or insertion event. In such cases, a gap is added to align sequences for comparison. Alignments are given a score based on the number of aligned nucleotides and gaps where gaps are penalized. The ideal alignment maximizes the number of aligned nucleotides while minimizing gaps. Humans are great at completing this task. If presented with a small set of sequences, our brains are adept at figuring out where a gap may be needed to make the sequences line up. We are good at evaluating the trade-off between maximizing the alignment score and minimizing the number of gaps. However, the sheer number of sequences generated at a time means researchers must rely on computer algorithms to do the alignment for them. The problem is that computers are not the best at this. There are several reasons why, one being that it is challenging to teach a computer how to evaluate the trade-off between score and gaps I just mentioned. It would be great if we could harness the power of many human brains to improve such alignments, or, better yet, if scientists could learn how those human brains perform the alignment to then improve computational methods for doing just that. And this is where video games, quite literally, come into play. As reported in Nature Biotechnology, scientists worked with game designers to seamlessly integrate an activity into the popular first-person shooter-looter game, Borderlands 3. By playing this game within a game, players collectively align thousands of 16S rRNA sequences from stool submitted by participants in the Human Gut Project Initiative, a citizen science initiative aimed at advancing microbiome research. So here's how it works. The game is a tile-matching minigame, where a player is presented with a puzzle consisting of a few 16S rRNA sequences that have been aligned by a computer. Each different colored tile in the puzzle represents a DNA nucleotide, so A, T, G, or C, and each column corresponds to a single sequence. On the left of the screen is a guide, which shows one to two of the most common nucleotides for a given position in a sequence, as determined via computational alignment of all the sequences in the larger data set. On the right are yellow gap tiles. The player's job is to align the sequences in the puzzle to the guide as closely as possible without going over the length of the guide. Through this process, they are essentially optimizing the alignment. To do this, a player inserts gap tiles to the sequences to shift the tiles up or down. These tiles represent gaps in the sequence. Players are scored based on the number of correctly aligned nucleotides, and there are variations in how a puzzle may be solved, that is, how the sequences may be aligned. By solving the puzzles, users also earn in-game currency, which provides further incentive to play. So this looks fun, but how are the puzzle solutions scientifically useful? Well, each puzzle is presented to a number of different players. Scientists then take those solutions from multiple players and see which are most popular in different contexts. 
They can extract the optimal or near optimal alignments and use that information to align the sequences based on what seems right to most humans. Based on a few different metrics, the gamer informed alignments were better than those from existing computational methods. For example, scientists generated phylogenetic trees from the alignment data and compared them to a so called state of the art tree built with benchmarked tools. They found that the borderland science alignment generates phylogeny closer to the state of the art than trees built with alternative methods for phylogeny inference. A better depiction of evolutionary relationships among microbes can be used to understand how particular microbes may be associated with diseases, aging, diet, and more. The implications are also bigger than this one data set. The data generated from the game, that is, information about how humans align sequences, will inform and train computational algorithms to improve alignments down the line. Now, Borderlands Science is actually one of several citizen science games that have been developed over the years to help scientists solve problems, from folding proteins to supporting dementia research. In general, these games are valuable for encouraging scientific curiosity, and they also help shape attitudes around science. However, most other games tend to sort of build a game around the scientific task. That is, they gamify a task, like aligning sequences, but keep it as close as possible to the scientific framework. Most have been standalone games as well. One must choose specifically to play that game. Combined with their design, this means such games generally attract a subset of people already interested in science and can struggle to attract a wide audience and garner high engagement. With Borderlands Science, the developers took a game-first approach, in which the focus was on user experience and the game itself, with the scientific task then integrated into it. In this way, they were able to incorporate the game into the world of an existing mass-market video game and, in doing so, reach a large swath of people and facilitate high engagement with the game itself, highlighting a strategy for using video games to supercharge citizen science. Indeed, since its launch in April 2020, millions of players have solved tens of millions of puzzles. Moving forward, the researchers suggest that such an approach can be expanded to other scientific questions and within the gaming industry as a whole. In this way, video games could be the key to solving diverse problems that benefit society on a broad scale. And that's all for today. Don't forget to take the survey linked in the description. I want to thank you for listening. Thank Ray Ortega for production, and I'll talk to you soon.